On March 28, 2011, this is pulling you number 57. Green Bridge friends, it's Michael here at Bridge Hands, and welcome to Day 2 on Partnership Agreements. On our last episode, we explored Bridge Laws 20, 40, and 75. As you'll recall, during the auction phase, you can ask for review and an explanation of the calls at your turn to make a call. You can ask for the relevant alternatives, and you can ask for the inferences why another call wasn't chosen. Also, during the play phase, during the play period after the final pass, you may ask the explanation of a bid or a call throughout the play period, at your own turn to play, of course, not your partner's, where you can request an explanation of an opponent's bid or call made during the auction phase. And on Law 40, you can ask a player's systemic agreement, those explicit agreements or even the implicit agreements by a mutual understanding. The laws also require the partnership to make their understandings available to their opponents before the beginning of the play. And one thing that surprises some players, although we have partnership agreements and understandings, we are free to make any call or play. In other words, we're not required of necessity to follow our partnership understandings. And finally, Law 75 deals with mistaken explanations or calls. This deals with a mistaking or misleading explanation by a partner to the opponents who have requested information. If we hear misinformation given to the opponents, we are not allowed to adjust our bidding. We must adhere to our partnership agreements. Should we make a mistaken explanation that damages the opponents, then after play the score is adjusted. In other words, the opponents are entitled to redress to restore equity. However, that said, like Law 40, if we make a mistaken call, one that is not according to our partnership agreements, even though it was a mistake in this case, no redress is entitled to the opponents. If it was a slip of the tongue, we said the wrong thing, didn't mean to, a slip of the hand in the bidding box, we pull out the wrong bid, not the one we had meant, then the ball is in play. It's the rub of the green. And play continues. Okay, as an aside, but related to partnership agreements, we ask our audience to complete a brief survey regarding opening bids and overcalls. Over the weekend, we received hundreds of responses and would like to share our feedback here. In part one of this video, we will present the consolidated data and highlight some of your reply comments. In part two of our Bridge Hands analysis for members, I'll offer my analysis of the data. However, in appreciation for those of you who completed the survey and may not currently subscribe to our free Premium or Ultra memberships, for several weeks we'll provide everyone with access to the entire data analysis. Okay, let's begin checking our results. Okay, on our survey we had 12 questions. And for each question there were around 6 responses. A respondent could pick 1, 2, all the way up to 6 of the responses if it made sense to them and there was also a spot for them to put comments which we'll discuss later. So on our first question, opening the bidding varies based upon what criteria and as you can see the second item the seat first, second, third or fourth seat where the player is sitting was the one that was most relevant. 50 percent is in the middle and so we have a much higher percentage. So most of the responses had more than 50%. The opponent's skill level clearly did not. Let's take a look at some specific numbers. Okay, the opening bids vary based upon vulnerability. 66% felt yes, that was an important factor. The seat, as we mentioned, almost 90% felt that this was a very important factor. The distribution points, the length points as most people would call them, 68% yes. The suit quality, how many primary or secondary honors the suit had, 69%. The opponent's skill level, um, almost 19%. And then other items that were manually scored, 13%. On question number two, dealt with preemptive opening bids. It varies based upon the vulnerability, yes, clearly a very important item for our respondents. Does the seat matter or not matter? Yes, the seat does matter. How about the quality? Is it important or is it only sometimes important? Pretty even here. Looking at the actual numbers, vulnerability for preempts, 81%. Seat matters, 69%. Seat does not matter, only 17%. Quality is always important, 
less than half, 42%. Quality is sometimes important, a little bit higher, 43.5%, rounding to 44%. Next, we look at the overcall requirements. Vulnerability, important, but not as important as suit quality and the ability to give lead direction. Way up here for this one. Length at higher levels, important. Overcall with values, um, even more important. Let's take a look at the data. So our overcall requirements based upon vulnerability gained 65%. And suit quality, as well as having good lead direction, by far a heavy hitter, 88%. Length at higher levels, 61%. Overcall with values, 70%. Overcall without values, only 9%. Next, we inquire about opening a little bit light. What do we do it based upon? Vulnerability, eh, over 50%. How about the seat? First, third seat? Yes, that's the big hitter here. Rule of 20, rule of 15, fairly strong. How about opening with a bad 12 points, such as with Jack Doubleton, Jack Tripleton, Queen Doubleton, King Queen Tight, or Queen Jack Tight? Not very many at all. And the supporting data for opening light, vulnerability, 59%. Based upon the seat, first, third, fourth, and so on, 83%. How about the rule of 20, rule of 15? Yes, 70%, not as strong as the seat per se. How about a bad 12 high card points? Only 19%. How about no trump opening based upon varying shapes? Some interesting and surprising answers here. Solid and conservative? By all means, over 50%. How about a 5-4-2-2 shape with stoppers in the side doubleton suits? Huh, less than half of what we had before. And a 5-4-2-2 with one stopper? As expected, way down. A 5-4-2-2 with partial stoppers? Um, in between. And how about a six-card minor suit? Well, people seem to prefer this more than they did the partial stoppers. And the survey says... Solid conservative, 66%. 5422 with stoppers, only 29%. 5422 with one stopper, down to 10%. And 5422 with partial stoppers, in between with 15. And with the six card minor, well, surprisingly, 21%. Okay, number six, no Trump opening. What other criteria do we base it on? How about discounting for Queen Jack, Queen Third? Queen Doubleton, King Queen Tight, or Queen Jack Tight? Yes, almost 50% would agree. Do we count extras for distribution, such as a nice suit headed by Ace King five times? Oh yes, more than half for that. How about a five card heart suit? Um, less than half. How about a five card spade suit? A little bit less than that, but not appreciably different. And other factors such as vulnerability or the seat? Uh, around 25%. Let's look at the numbers, please. Okay, the discount factor for poor suit quality, 47%. The extras for Ace-King five times, a five-card suit headed by high-quality values, 56%. A five-card heart suit, not quite half, only 39%. How about a five-card spade suit? Huh, 35%. And how about others such as vulnerability or the seat position, 20%. And question number seven, two suited calls for those of you who like to use Michael's unusual no trump, sandwich no trumps, or whatever have you, based upon vulnerability, around 50%, the seat, not quite so important, the two level versus committing your partnership to the three level, yes, important. How about discipline, such as the suit quality, um, more important yet, undisciplined, very few, such as a four, five, two, two shape. And looking at the supporting data, vulnerability, 53%. The seat, 39%. The level, 2 versus 3 level, 52% uh, thought that was important. Disciplined, yes, 60%. The suit quality is important. Undisciplined, such as a 4 5 two, two shape, only 14%. And on question number 8, special opening bids for those who chose to answer this one. For a 3-no-trump, how many used a gambling 3-no-trump with a ace-king-queen seven times? Uh, clearly over 50%. How about 
making the same bid, however using a broken 8-card suit. Small percentage. How many use two diamonds as some sort of a conventional call versus just a weak preemptive two? Well, looks like it's under 50%. Or two hearts or two spades in the fourth seat. Does it show full opening values? Not as many as we might expect. Looking at the associated data, the gambling three no trump with the minor suit ace, king, queen seven times, 67%. The gambling three no trump with a broken eight card suit as an alternative, only 8% use this method. Conventional two diamond bid of some sort, uh, one third or more, 37% of our respondents responded yes. How about two heart or two spade bid in the fourth seat? Do they show that as full values? No, only 38% chose to use that method. Now, number nine, we turn our attention to the criteria for a takeout double based upon right away we can see less with more shape is more than 50%. Our respondents are more comfortable making a takeout double call with less points and more shape than they are based upon as a, for instance, worrying about vulnerability or the seat or relative position. And how about doubling and then bidding a new suit? The type two doubles, what does that mean? A slightly higher percentage, almost 50%, seem to like the idea of making a double in a new suit with 18 points and a very good suit. Slightly less values with 16 points and an okay suit. The numbers please. Take out double based upon vulnerability. Only 39% worried about this. Same with the seat or position. 40%. Less with more shape. Yes, 57% thought this was a good answer. And the double in a new suit with a very good hand, 18 points and a very good suit, 49%. Double with a lesser suit and 16 plus points, 42% on this one. On item number 10, we have an assortment of questions, so we'll work through this slowly. Two no trump overcalls in the pass out seat. Does it require 19 to 21 points? Less than 50% would agree with this one. How about with favorable vulnerability? Would you interfere with the opponent's strong two club bid? Almost 50%? Yes. How about neutral vulnerability? Would you interfere with the opponent's two clubs? About half that. Preemptive jump over calls. Does it promise the expected length? Oh yes, say most. How about preemptive jump over calls? Does it promise suit quality? Uh, not so very much, say most of our respondents. In our associated data, the two no trump overcalls with 19 to 21 points, 38%. Two club interference with favorable vulnerability, 46%. How about neutral vulnerability, down to 20%. How about preemptive jump overcalls? Does it promise the expected length? Yes, say 79%. How about the expected strength in the suit? Only 23% will agree with this one. On question number 11, we probe opening or overcalling one heart or one spade based upon varying suit lengths. Does it always require a five card or longer suit? Yes, say about three quarters. How about opening a four card suit with strong honors? Not too many. How about overcalling a four card suit with strong honors? About twice as many, but still not anywhere near 50%. How about overcalling a four card suit with 13 points? Hardly any at all. How about in the third or fourth seat if we have the requisite high card points and four card suit? Still not too many. Turning our attention to the numbers for the major suit opener or overcallers, always a five card suit, 75%. Opening a four card suit with strong honors, only 14%. And overcalling the same, up to 31%. Overcalling a four card suit with 13 points but not necessarily strong honors in a suit, only 11%. And having the requisite high card points with a four card suit in third or fourth seat, uh, 14%. On our last question, when it comes to opening or overcalling one club or one diamond, right away we can see that the big heavy hitter is opening one diamond with a three card or longer diamond suit, more than 50% as opposed to opening one club with only two clubs or more, the short club, less than half. How about overcalling 
one diamond with a four card strong diamond suit not too many how about overcalling one diamond with a four card suit and 13 points still not too many how about overcalling two clubs with four clubs in a strong honor situation very few in our supporting numbers those who like to open one club with a short club two clubs or more 31 percent versus those who use the traditional one diamond showing three or more diamonds 61 percent in the overcall situation one diamond with four or more and a strong diamond suit only 27 percent how about opening one diamond with four or more and 13 points maybe not a strong suit 27 percent and overcalling two clubs with only a four card club suit but with a strong hand hmm, only 13 percent okay i hope you enjoyed part one of our lesson for free premium and ultra members on our next segment i will provide my analysis of the data and an appreciation for everyone providing their valuable inputs to us on an interim basis everyone is invited to view part two with our feedback of course if you're not currently a member we welcome you to regularly begin enjoying membership privileges for under ten dollars for a three-month subscription so don't delay come on down and sign up today okay everyone i hope to see you on the flip side bye for now